welcome to today's lecture. We made a beginning to uh, understand the magnetic hydrothermal system and the resulting deposit taking the porphyry copper deposits as the example and uh, we would uh, look at it a little more details and so that the uh, and, and as, as you have discussed the other deposits are also somehow uh, closely related to these deposits and in the in the last lecture we saw that these porphyry copper deposits are specifically associated with felsic uh, magmatic rocks ranging in composition from granite to granodiorite, quartz diorite, diorite, monzonite even go going up to a little more alkaline variety cyanite also rarely. Uh, if we take the uh, entire class the copper, molybdenum, gold, porphyries uh, in general. Uh, let us take a look on this uh, figure which is uh, a model for the occurrence of the porphyry copper deposits. What we see here is generally what we see that the porphyry copper deposit is associated with a small plug like uh, body magmatic body of felsic composition the range which we have already seen. And this small stock is giving rise to a deposit the quantity of the metals which we get in terms of several thousands several hundreds of tons even reaching to uh, to sometimes a thousand million tons. So, if we go by a uh, mass balance of this granite being the sole contributor of the metal of course, there is no other possible source here it is the granite which is the source for the metal then it does uh, look like that such huge uh, mineralization is very unlikely to be resulted by a small granitic body like this. With our uh, understanding on the felsic system in general and uh, looking into the porphyry system in particular this particular this model uh, was proposed long back where it is proposed that what we see as a small stock uh, in the mineralized area to whichever porphyry deposit we visit it is actually a result of uh, a lar much larger felsic magmatic system in the subs in the subcrustal level at deeper levels and the this small body is is the one which actually gets separated out of the larger uh, granitic uh, pluton which was emplaced at a particular depth condition in the earth's crust and so so uh, this uh, this is a generalized model uh, which is given for the porphyry copper deposits we will discuss about the different alteration zones but these deposits are essentially characterized by uh, the alteration zones which surround the uh, mineralized pluton mineralized plug like body small plug like body and has a very characteristic uh, porphyritic texture from which the name of the deposit is derived as porphyry type deposit. They do have a porphyritic uh, texture in the uh, so um, having some early formed uh, phenocryst and with ground mass saccharidal type of texture and they are associated with many other features for example, uh, abrexia and then some uh, it is being it is intruding into the country rock uh, which is by uh, schematically shown uh, here and as we know them they occur in the continental arc type of setting Chile and Andes where essentially their stratovolcano type structure. Now, uh, these these are some of the uh, schematic diagram uh, proposed on based on the understanding of the felsic system and the way they evolve and uh, the mineralization is resulted. First of all the as we know from the very source from which the granitic magma are generated they are generated from some kind of a basaltic amphibolite type of source which contain uh, water in their structure and the water water content could be anything like 2 to 5 weight percent and what is more important is that when the rocks partially, partially melt the amount of water that is contributed by the partial melt which can be also be calculated by taking some mass balance calculations. And if we take this particular 
uh, body which is emplaced in any part of the crust, then uh, during the progress of crystallization this represents a thousand, uh, hypothetical 1000 degree uh, solidus for the, uh, for the system and what is shown here is there are some pre there are some uh, smaller injections of this Seinfeld-Sig materials in the form of dikes here and this S1 is representing the water saturated solidus surface. The solidus is actually uh, uh, suppressed here because of the water content and this particular uh, crystallizing body uh, with uh, crystallization uh, of substance with crystallization of the main uh, with the uh, uh, early crystallizing phases, the residual melt is becoming uh, charged or uh, is concentrated with respect to water uh, which is keep which keeps on in increasing and is accumulating on the top part which can be called as a water saturated carpus. Now, here at a later stage of solidification this water this volatile water along with all the uh, chlorine, fluorine and uh, sulphur, sulphurous vapor all are accumulating in the carpus they are exerting uh, pressure on the overlying rock and if the yield strength of the overlying rock is uh, exceeded then this this is this results in a network the uh, some uh, the, uh, the region which is essentially a network of fracture and through which the uh, crystal melt marsh along with the residual fluid is uh, is emplaced within the shallow part of the uh, of the of the system and which is exemplified very very dense network of fractures which almost uh, are basically called as the stock work and res resulted by the hydro fracturing. The amount of uh, pressure that is exerted with the percentage of uh, fluid that is accumulated or exerting the pressure can be very well calculated by from thermodynamic consideration by the change in volume of the uh, of the fluid with decrease in pressure. And uh, uh, so, here uh, this this also sometimes referred to as uh, a situation which is this uh, separation of the volatile phase from a crystallizing magma with initial crystallization of the anhydrous or very nominally hydrous minerals. This is something called as a retrograde boiling or second boiling and uh, accumulation of the fluid uh, within the carpus region of the crystallizing pluton and exerting pressure which uh, results in this, this region where the small plug like body is emplaced and is also there is there is brexiation in the rock. So, this gives us a very uh, dense network of fracture and a complicated pattern, but this is actually the region in which the uh, fluid starts uh, fluid deposits whatever. So, whatever is the uh, so during the melt fluid equilibria metals like copper which essentially is incompatible during the solid melt uh, interaction solid melt evolution process acts as uh, incompatible or gets very strongly partitioned into the volatile which gets up so gets exalted out of this crystallizing melt. So, the fluid which exhausts from this melt is substantially rich in metals like uh, copper and uh, uh, also gold and they are deposited as the uh, within this uh, region uh, in a very well defined uh, mineralized part which will be which we will see here. So, uh, in a in a later stage where the, the this hydrothermal system is warning almost coming to the closing stage of the system there we see there are lots of uh, such dikes and the uh, the, mm, the 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 brexiated uh, regions and so with this general picture this of evolution the of a magmatic hydrothermal system which should which actually uh, applies to almost all the magmatic system associated with felsic magmatism will follow a sequence where there may be a difference here and there based on what is the original for what is the initial so the critical parameter as we uh, proposed be, at the very beginning the initial water content and the value of water concentration at saturation that means the point at which the fluid phase is getting saturated getting separated or exalved out of the crystallizing melt they are the critical parameter the ratio the value that we get by dividing the original water content uh, which uh, 
we can we can represent as a parameter which is as a concentration which is which we call as a concentration of water of the say of the melt initially when it is uh, initial C L 0 to a value of water at S. So, this is the initial concentration or initial weight concentration of water in terms of weight percent and this value which could be it is like uh, the value at a volatile saturation. So, this ratio C w L 0 by C w L s is uh, usually uh, high if the water uh, the origin the, the original water content is high and the uh, is low and there has been good amount of uh, crystallization of the melt and then it is attaining the water saturation and it also very much is very very sensitive to the depth at which it is emplaced and in the context of the porphyry copper deposits they are generally uh, emplaced at depths corresponding to pressure of almost 500 bars to 2 kilo bars not more than that that means almost about 6 7 kilometers to 2 kilometers to 3 kilometers in the uh, below the earth's uh, surface so what results by this process uh, can be schematically shown on this diagram it is taken from one particular deposit even this kind of a uh, fault which is shown as the san manuel this is from the san manuel kalamazoo deposit in arizona and if we look at these two uh, diagram here then this is the core uh, representing the small plug like body which is emplaced and then uh, it is uh, surrounding. So, surrounding that is essentially a zone where there is a low grade mineralization this chalcopyrite, pyrite and molybdenite and then there is a rich ore cell part which contains the maximum concentration of copper and the richest part of the ore body and is surrounded by uh, again a shell where the it is pyrite rich, but chalcopyrite is poor and the mineralization dies out and that becomes a country rock. So, here this has a very good correspondence with the uh, alteration which we will be discussing here the core part which also is a highest temperature and the fluid has got all the signatures of a directly magmatically derived fluid with high salinity and very high temperature and this uh, zone is characterized by uh, the kind of mineral alteration which we call them is potassic which will be we will see the reactions. Potassic alteration this is a phyllic alteration which is dominated by assemblage of quartz and sericite and the ore cell is essentially uh, or the richest part of the mineralization coincides with the boundary of the potassic and the phyllic uh, uh, alteration zones and then there is the argelic alteration zone and then it is surrounded by a propylitic alteration zone and sometimes we do also have a advanced argelic zone which we will be discussing uh, a short while. So, uh, taking the uh, felsic taking the magmatic uh, deposits associated with felsic magmat felsic rocks or felsic magmatic system this can this is kind of a generalized picture which can be obtained and uh, is observed uh, in deposits all over the world. There may be some minor variations here and there sometimes all the alteration zones may not be developed or one later alteration zone might mask or might imprint the earlier alteration zone and many variations are possible depending on the local uh, geological conditions, but porphyry copper deposits all over the world do conform to such kind of a general uh, uh, morphology. So, here since we uh, in this particular course we will be looking at the ore deposits uh, without getting into details into the ore genesis uh, we we can always see them what exactly the kind of morphology that is resulted the associated features that helps us in a very meaningful way. So, the, uh, the hydrothermal alteration zones the one so basically the hydrothermal alteration zones we can say that in an evolving system the fluid evolves to such a state that the uh, that the fluid becomes or the early formed mineral assemblages are out of equilibrium with the changed chemistry of the fluid and uh, this example is the potassium alteration in the core of the porphyry copper deposit porphyry type deposits 
where early hornblende gets altered to biotite and plagioclase to potash feldspar. Plagioclase to potash feldspar can be simply written by a very simple reaction of addition of potash to a like an albite plus potash giving rise to potash feldspar plus soda. So, it very, very much controlled by the the concentration ratios of these two important uh, elements which is so sodium and potassium or we can even write such reactions for uh, calcium. So, this reaction which uh, is uh, hypothetically is a, this is an adenitic horn blend which is acted upon by the potash rich fluid which uh, is there in the core of the with uh, evolution of the hydrothermal fluid uh, and this fluid is uh, the, uh, the pH of the fluid is such that we have there in the sulphate stability field. So, this reaction is proposed for conversion of um, Hornblend to uh, bi biotite in a in a potassium alteration zone typically so seen in the core of the porphyry copper deposit. What is to be observed here is this also gives rise to uh, calcium sulphate which is anhydrite which is a very uh, uh, ubiquitous in occurrence in the core zone of the of the porphyry copper deposits very widely and this is taken one of the important criteria for identification of a labeling a deposit or telling a deposit whether it is porphyry copper or not when it is understood that this most of the sulfur or in the form when the fluid is in sulfate or most of in the uh, oxidation in the higher oxidation state it has also got important bearing in the sense that the metals which were initially dissolved in the melt uh, will not be getting precipitated in, this, in the form of sulphides or disseminated sulphide. Uh, in that case, the result in, a, in getting a high, highly enriched deposit would not be possible. So, the fluid essentially has to have a higher oxidation state at the beginning, so that the metals most of these important metals like copper, molybdenum or gold will get uh, partitioned into the vapor phase efficiently, so that the deposit will result. So, this is the generally labeled the potassium alteration zone which is at the core of the uh, porphyry system. Then when we as we saw as we saw just saw in the diagram where the concentric cells of the alteration zones arranged uh, around the centralized mineralized body. We have the phyllic and the argillic alteration zones where the phyllic alteration zone can be represented by reaction as potassium feldspar is acted upon uh, hydrolyzed by H plus ion to give rise to seri muscovite which is essentially uh, in the alteration zone it is sericite the white mica plus silica and liberation of the potassium ion. So, it is understandable that it is uh, essentially the pH of the fluid which is coming to be the controlling factor and uh, one, one, one of the interesting thing here is that uh, with the warning stage uh, one of the important aspect of the warning stage of the magmatic hydrothermal system like porphyry copper here. Now, once the uh, system is uh, uh, the hydrothermal uh, or the magmatic stage is coming to a close that time it has enough of opportunity for fluids uh, low temperature fluids like the meteoric fluid essentially to come uh, to actually get uh, infiltrated into the system and interact with the materials to give rise to different types of alterations and the phyllic and then when we see the argillic alteration where a uh, mineral which is produced here in the say phyllic zone is muscovite which is getting again attacked by H plus ion to give rise to kaolinite which is the index mineral or the, uh, the mineral which uh, exemplifies or which characterizes the argillic alteration zone around the porphyry copper deposit uh, following or immediately uh, enveloping the phyllic alteration zone. Uh, sometimes we do get uh, the advanced argillic alteration giving rise to minerals like aleunite where the kaolinite which is produced in the argillic alteration zone is again acted upon by potass and uh, uh, very low uh, acidic uh, the pH has gone to much lower value with abundance of hydrogen ion this gives rise to aleunite and aleunite is one of the very characteristic mineral associated with the uh, advanced argillic alteration zones in porphyry copper deposits. There are several such reactions which can be written uh, muscovite can be acted upon by uh, sulphate and at a high at a low very low pH conditions to give aluminite or even potash feldspar also at very low pH conditions can give rise to aluminite. Uh, so, it does uh, it does explain to some extent some of the overlapping uh, 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 situations in which the one alteration zone can 
uh, penetrating to the other and but in most of the cases the alteration zones can be identifiable and the the alteration zone which is basically labeled as a propylytic alteration zone which is characterized by the presence of uh, biotite and chloride sorry epidote and chloride that is, uh, is a little bit of a difference here because it it is uh, it is the uh, it is a zone which uh, rather indicates uh, rock dominated or low fluid by uh, low low uh, fluid by rock ratio and kind of uh, uh, the original uh, green cyst facies assemblies persistence of the original green cyst uh, facies type assemblies in the rock. So, what essentially we are getting a system here the porphyry copper deposits are very much characterized by multiple phases of such intrusions in one particular uh, if we see the sections of many such deposits we find that there are many phases of uh, such felsic intrusions in one particular uh, uh, deposit particular um, mineralization zone and sometimes it is observed that the latest uh, phase is essentially the productive stage which is a product of uh, the crystallization evolution of a uh, larger magmatic melt granitic magmatic melt at depth. So, the alteration that we get is essentially within this uh, uh, granitic or the felsic uh, country rock which are there or sometimes could be the sediments. So, this alteration the propylytic alteration zone is characterized by presence of uh, biotite and epidote which we can see that this is a horn blade which can get altered to phlogopite as we saw before or a phlogopite kind of biotite, biotite can be hydrolyzed to give rise to chloride. So, maybe the combination of such, such kind of reactions will be giving rise to a situation where we will have epidote and chloride to be dominant in this alteration zone which is characteristic of the propylytic alteration zone. And it is understood that from potassic uh, zone to the advanced argillic zone and the propylytic zone the temperature of the fluid is decreasing it is gradually from an original magmatic fluid which is getting cooled because with mixing of uh, meteoric fluid and uh, also in terms of the salinity the, the salinity of the fluid is the higher is the most in the potassium alteration zone where the fluid inclusion sometimes shows presence of multiple daughter uh, phages and the, sal the, the, the salinity in terms of weight percent NSE equivalent going to almost 60, 65 or 70 uh, in, in many studied uh, well studied porphyry copper deposits in the western American Cordillera. Uh, the, uh, so, isotopic studies and many other kind of uh, studies done on the porphyry copper deposits very clearly shows the involvement of uh, magmatic fluid. So, this is the general characteristic of the porphyry copper deposits around the world variations. Uh, so, with that uh, in mind if we just try to see what the porphyry molybdenum deposits are. So, the porphyry molybdenum deposits uh, generally do have an antipathetic relationship with copper in terms of the distribution. The areas like the Chilean Andes or the uh, regions in the West American Cordillera where there are uh, there are uh, dominance of porphyry copper deposit we do not see uh, much of molybdenum deposits there. The ones which are like uh, the very the example is the climax uh, deposit in Colorado or the uh, this uh, Henderson and climax in Colorado and the uh, there are some such uh, uh, deposits rich deposit of molybdenum which are not associated with or no, not in very close special association with uh, the porphyry copper deposits the possibly something which is uh, critical uh, about molybdenum deposits or which exactly was not in very well known. Although many of the porphyry copper deposits do have concentrations of molybdenum in uh, insignificant quantity. So, here the, the difference which have been found out in such cases is that the parent magma is more enriched with fluorine and other volatiles. So, it apparently it looks like that the source the, 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 the magmatic rock which gives rise to porphyry molybdenum deposit is more felsic in its composition and uh, have a very high concentration of the more volatile components 
like fluorine and other uh, volatile species. It is indicated by presence of topaz and abundance of fluorite along with the in the alteration zones and mineralization uh, domains in the porphyry molybdenum deposit. And one of the important differences as was discussed here is a critical parameter which is the ratio of the CWL0 by CWLS that is the, the original uh, the initial water content divided by the water content and saturation is generally very is very high in case of molybdenum deposits and is uh, low in case of copper deposit. Because, uh, because of the very inherent difference between these two elements molybdenum and copper, molybdenum is uh, copper is more compatible than molybdenum in its uh, nature. Although porphyry copper deposits are abundant in other parts, a circum Pacific. So, this is what exactly uh, we have been seeing that in the uh, circum Pacific region, Iran, China, and many other uh, in the Chilean Andes, these porphyry molybdenum deposits are rather uh, rare and uh, mostly confined to the Western American Cordillera. The rich molybdenum deposits appear to be associated with the reef phase, which is actually not very uh, conclusively known in case of the porphyry copper deposits that the, uh, the rather uh, poorer or lean uh, molybdenum porphyry molybdenum deposits are associated with the magmatic bodies which are product during the, uh, the convergent type tectonic tectonics uh, settings where uh, whereas, the reach the, the, the reach part of the most richest part of the porphyry molybdenum deposit are associated with a uh, with a situation which more more corresponds to a rifting phase where you have highly evolved rhyolitic and alkaline kind of magma uh, which gives rise to porphyry molybdenum deposit which is not known in the porphyry copper deposit situation whereas the alteration characteristics are more or less uh, similar in the um, two types of deposits we do have the other uh, class uh, the other type of porphyry deposit which are the porphyry tin deposits they 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 also do they they are mostly specially uh, if we if we look at the chilean man, chilean andes margin like uh, if uh, this is the this is the chilean Andes. This uh, generally is the. This is the porphyry. This is the copper belt, porphyry copper belt, and a little to the east, eastern side, we have the. This is the tin belt, and the Bolivian uh, uh, tin deposits, which are which are observed to be occurring to the eastern or the continental side uh, from the Andean Andean margin, and. Uh, so, more or less conforming to the similar kind of architecture, the porphyry tin deposits, the only difference is that the, the way we saw the stock in case of the porphyry copper deposits, which is more cylindrical and is emplaced in the form of a porphyritic stock with a small plug like body, maximum uh, occurring within a just about a 1 square kilometer or so. This porphyry tin deposit, the magmatic body is characteristically inverted cone shape kind of body and the, the potassic alteration zone is a uh, zone generally misses from this uh, porphyry tin deposits and here it is also uh, observed that the or the main fundamental difference between a porphyry copper and a porphyry tin deposit is that the parent magma uh, which gives rise to the porphyry tin deposits do have a much lower oxidation state corresponding to the porphyry copper deposit. In fact, in the context of the tin and the copper deposit, there is a classification scheme that was proposed for the for the granitoids, which is basically the I type, which I have already stated, which is basically the I or the I standing for igneous uh, protolith or igneous precursor. Compared to that, the granitoids, which are named as S type. S standing for sedimentary and these uh, S type granites have were generated 
a little bit away if we if we if we look at the continental the chilean margin so here we have the chilean andes uh, and the melts which are generating from here which are more it's coming from the melting of the uh, slab and is basically forming the stratovolcano and that is the region for the porphyry copper deposit. The melts which are generated in these regions, if this is the Chilean Andes uh, copper uh, zone, then this zone actually represent the zone in which this S type magma by melting of the already available crust is melting to give rise to the magma which are the S type and the S type magma are observed to be of lower oxidation state uh, or kind of uh, reduced may be because of the fact that they do con they are derived from the sediment the melting of the sediments which are originally containing some carbonaceous material in them because of the uh, because of that the melt which is generated the S type are reducing and that is how they could carry uh, the tin in a plus 2 oxidation state and during the uh, later st stage when the the, the fluid is mixing with uh, high oxidation with uh, fluids of higher oxidation state the deposition is taking place so the only problem the only thing is that even though these deposits like bolivian tin are uh, being uh, labeled as porphyry type but there are many variations in their characteristics and sometimes there are some amount of debate as to whether they truly represent porphyry type or not but as of uh, the present state of the art knowledge we do call them as the porphyry tin deposits. So, thank you for uh, today we will be continuing this uh, discussion in the next class. Thank you.